Okay, so let's begin. Um, let me just present this. Okay, you should be seeing the, the presentation in full screen. Um, okay, so I'm going to assume that you guys can see it. It says Chapter 3, Future Time. So, of course, uh, right, tengo con Dean present now. Hahaha, <laughs> gracias. Ah, ya estoy viejo. Okay, now you should be seeing my screen. And on the piedras, so heavy, good morning. All right, now you should be seeing the presentation. Somebody said something. Mm -hmm. All right, good morning, Swang. And I guess that you could see it, so I'm going to go presenting it again. All right. So, cuando mi vecino se le quitan las ganas de trabajar. Okay. Good, thank you. I don't know if you guys can hear that noise, but I live with that every day and I hate it. Let's continue. So, future time is something, uh, it's basically sentences that deal with something that has yet to happen something that will happen in the future that is not happening yet. So I'm going to open up uh, the next slide. And I want you guys to uh, just take a moment, turn on your microphone and tell me, what are you doing tonight? Does anybody have any special plans tonight? I'm just going to study and make a project, probably. All right. Um, okay, so you are going to study. Okay, good. Who else is going to be doing something? I mean, I have a test tomorrow, so I have to study. Okay. Well, I'm going to study. You have to study. Okay. Anybody doing something other than studying? Okay, what about um, Najeli? Well, then I'm going to do some work and mm -hmm. sleep. All right, good, thank you. What about Odalis? Well, at, at this time, I don't have anything in mind to do this, this night. Okay, so you don't know what you're doing tonight. Exactly. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you. Uh, Derek, I don't know if you've spoken because I can't see the names of the people who've spoken. Derek, what will you do tonight? I'm probably just going to study some English and also some programming. Okay, good. All right, guys. So, and girls and everybody, um, most of you used a specific way of uh, conjugating in the future tense. We're going to see that just now. So the simple future, remember that uh, tenses can be either simple or progressive. The simple future has two different forms in English. We use will and we use be going to. Sometimes these two forms can be used interchangeably, but they often express two very different meanings. Both will and be going to refer to a specific time in the future. Okay, so a lot of you said, I'm going to study. Um, some of you could have said, but you didn't. Uh, you will be doing this or doing that. Um, anyways, so there are, as I said, two forms, will and be going to. The first one is will form. So the formula for the will form is just will and the main verb. This is the simplest way to conjugate in the future tense. For example, you will help him later. Will you help him later? And you will not help him later. So of course we have a positive statement, we have a negative statement at the bottom, and in the middle we have a question. Um, I'm sorry, it's just the noise is very distracting. I'm trying not to let it bother me, but it's very difficult. So uh, for the will form, all we have to do is add will and add the main verb without any modifications. It's just in its present form. 
And that's it. You can take any verb and you can add will to it. Um, and you've basically made a sentence in the future tense. It's really that simple. Now, let's start adding stuff to it. The be going to form. Now, in this case, be is a placeholder for the be verb, okay? So it's not be going to, it is am going to, or is going to, or are going to, okay? So you conjugate the be verb into one of its three present forms, and then you add going to, and then you add the verb, okay? So the main verb here is meet. In all three sentences, we use me, okay? And uh, we have the be going to, which is am, is, or are, and going to. In this case, um, the pronoun or the subject, in this case, would be you, okay? Which is why we're using the same be verb. So it's are. So it's are going to. You are going to meet Jane tonight. Are you going to meet Jane tonight? No, you are not going to meet Jane tonight. Just like in the will form, we have the positive statement, we have the question, and we have the negative statement here, okay? Um, you could, of course, change the subject from you to I, for example, and then you would also have to change the be verb. So if this were I, I am going to meet Jane tonight. Um, If you were asking about somebody else, like for example, he, he is going to meet Jane tonight or he is not going to meet Jane tonight. It all depends on the pronoun and the subject, excuse me, the pronoun and the pluralization, but we'll see that in just a second. Um, will versus be going to. So when do you use will versus when do you use the be going to form? Let's start with will. So will is used to express a voluntary action, as in, I will send you the information when I get it. You can also use will to express a promise. I will call you when I arrive. You can also use will to express a prediction. The movie Mulan will win several Academy Awards. Okay? So basically, when you are expressing an action that... Um, a voluntary action, when you're expressing a promise or a prediction, you can use will. By the way, I haven't seen the new Mulan movie because I don't want to pay $30 to watch a movie, a new movie in my living room. I'd rather go to the cinema, but I'm not going to talk about that anymore. So let's continue. So when do we use be going to? Well, you can use be going to when you express a plan or when you express a prediction. So, for example, for plan, he is going to spend his vacation in Puerto Rico. For a prediction, the year 2021 will be a very boring year. And here's the hoping, because I cannot take any more excitement this year. Um, so those were the two forms of the simple future. It's just will and be going to. Now, of course, there is a progressive form in every in every tense, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and of course, we're gonna be discussing the progressive form. So the pro future progressive indicates continuing action, something that will be happening or going on at some point in the future, okay? So the progressive form is just kind of the same in all tenses, whether it's future, past, or present. It really just tells you that something is something happened first and it leads to a subsequent action. And depending on what time you're viewing that action from is how we can tell whether or not it's um, excuse me, whether or not it's past, present or future. This tense is formed with the modal will plus be plus the present participle of the verb with an ing ending. OK, I just know. I know that the sentence was just, just a little bit confusing, so I'm just going to show you these examples and explain as I go. So I will be running in next year's Boston Marathon. Okay, let's take a look at the red text. We have will, we have be, 
and then the present participle of the verb, which is really the main verb with an ing ending. Okay? If you remember the present and the past progressives, they all end with ing. Okay? The future is just like that. I will be running. I will be taking. We will be enjoying. By this time tomorrow, I will be taking a lit course. Next year, we'll be enjoying baseball season more than basketball season. Okay? All that we need is will, be, and a verb with ing. Okay? Expressing future time. Be going to and will. Be going to and will are used to express future time. Examples A and B have the same meaning. Sometimes will and be going to express different meanings. These differences are discussed in a later chart, where in 3.1, uh, we are going to see the differences in 3.5. So for now, we're just going to focus on how they are similar. So if you look at the future, of course, this is the present here. To the left is the past. And of course, the future is to the right. It's something that is coming that is not here yet. In sentences A and B, I am going to leave at 9 tomorrow morning and I will leave at 9 tomorrow morning. They both mean the same thing. It means that tomorrow morning at 9 in the morning, I will not be here. I will be leaving to someplace else. You can express that in these two different ways and it still means the same thing. Now, this is something we're going to discuss a little bit later today. These are the time clauses. So, today, tonight, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, this week, for example. They can all express present, past, or future time as in C through E. So in these sentences here, um, we express time using these uh, time words. So Sam is in his office this morning. Anne was in her office this morning at 8, but now she's at a meeting. Bob is going to be in his office this morning after his dentist appointment. Um, there are some things I want, I want to point out to you. For example, this morning here can be expressed in different tenses according to the, uh, the be verb. So in this case, this morning would be in the present form, in the present tense. Uh, how we know this is because of the be verb here. Okay, So this morning, Sam is in his office. Remember that is is a present verb, a present be verb. Now, counts alternately, um, we can also use this morning in the past tense, such as in this sentence. Anne was in her office this morning. Remember that was is the be verb of the past. Um, but of course, this continues into the present by saying, but now she's at a meeting. Excuse me. And B. Excuse me, E. Bob is going to be in his office this morning after his dentist appointment. This would be the future tense. Um, of course, we are using is going to be. We could also use will be. Um, but we're using is going to be because I wanted to um, resaltar this B verb here is. Um, and by the way, this going to be here. B is not a B verb here. This is actually a main verb. We're going to see that later. Um, and this is on the condition that after Bob finishes his dentist appointment, he will be at his office. By the way, um, this reminds me, um, on Wednesday the 23rd, I do have a dentist appointment. So um, it conflicts with this class schedule, so we will not be meeting on the 23rd. That is not this upcoming Wednesday, but the one above that. So it's two weeks from now. I will be sending a reminder before that happens. But um, yeah, just letting you guys know. All right, so chart 3.2 forms with be going to. Be going to is followed by the simple form of the verb as an A and B. So the simple form of the verb. We are going to be late. She's going to come tomorrow. Um, as I said, um, this B that is in bold is not actually a B verb, as is um, R, am, is. This is functioning as the main verb of the sentence. So it's functioning like 
like any other action here. Uh, for example, this one, come. She's going to come tomorrow. B is functioning in the same form as this. Um, básicamente sería un estado de ser. So we are going to be late. She's going to come tomorrow. We're using the simple form of the verb. And if you notice, it is the present form of the verb. Um, we don't conjugate it into the past. And we don't conjugate the verb itself into the future. Um, and I have to mention that this is in the present because um, you may be, you may be um, tempted to conjugate this with the S form, as is here. But we know this is incorrect. Um, we always should say she's going to come tomorrow, not she's going to come tomorrow. In the future, we do not add the S ending to the present form of the verbs, okay? So you can make positive statements and you can make questions. Um, in this case, we have the be verb, we have the subject, and we end with going to. Going to, we don't change at all. It's always going to. Um, the subject is I, he, she, it, they, we, and you. Okay? It could be also like a person's name, something like that. And I think my mouse just died on me. I'll just use the trackpad. Okay. Um, okay, lucky. Lucky. So, in this case, um, we actually take the the be verb and the pronoun and we change up their order because we used to start the sentence with the uh, the pronoun and now we're gonna start the sentence with the be verb okay so am I going to be late is she going to be late are you going to be late we just took the be verb and the pronoun and we switched up their order and then we added a question mark to the end and that is how we made a question. We can also make negatives. So um, we take the be verb, we take not or no, and we add going to. So now we've reverted back to starting the sentence with the pronoun and continuing with the be verb. So I am not going to be late. He is not going to be late. We are not going to be late, etc. Um, and then finally over here be going to is more common in speaking and informal writing than in formal writing basically in informal speaking it is sometimes pronounced gonna and this is how you say gonna how you write gonna in phonetics gonna is not usually a written form um, I would rather not see gonna in your essays or stuff like that um, this is more on you know something you use when you're talking to someone for example, hurry up, we're gonna be late. This is the same thing as going to. Gonna is basically a shortened way of staying going to. Okay, continuing with be going to versus will. Be going to and will mean the same when they are used to make predictions about the future. For example, A and B have the same meaning. Um, so these two have the same meaning. She is going to succeed because she works hard, and she will succeed because she works hard. Um, these are just predictions um, about the future that are based on this person, um, how we how we see, how we feel about them, how we think about them. So in this case, we can use is going to succeed or will succeed interchangeably. Um, we could use one or the other, and it still means the same thing. Now, there are differences between be going to and will. So, in this case, we use be going to, but not will. We use be going to to express a prior plan. For example, a plan made before the moment of speaking. So, in this sentence over here, the speaker plans to build a bookcase. I bought some wood because I'm going to build a bookcase for my apartment. Okay? I am this man, um, and it is kind of conditional because um, you could assume that this person didn't actually go through with it or will not go through with it. But the intention to complete that to complete that task was there. So basically, this person wants to build the bookcase, 
and so they bought some wood for that. So this is be going to. When do we use will instead of be going to? Will is used to express a decision the speaker makes at the moment of speaking. In sentence D, the speaker decides or he volunteers to help at the immediate present moment, meaning that he did not have a prior plan or intention to help. This chair is too heavy for you to carry alone. I will help you. If you see here, I, um, we've conjugated, excuse me, we've contracted uh, will and I into I'll. It means the same thing, but you're not going to see any contractions in the test. Um, I don't want to confuse you any further. So basically what this sentence is saying is that I see you carrying this chair. I notice it is um, too heavy for you to carry by yourself. When I was first watching you carry this chair, I noticed, I thought you didn't need any help. I see you struggling, so I decide to help. Okay? So, will is a more immediate decision, and be going to is a more premeditated decision. Um, those are just some small differences. Okay, so, how do we express future time? Well, um, of course, in the simple future, we can express it in two different ways. We can express it with going to, or we can express it with will. Okay? I've color-coded some of these words here, so you can uh, know what word class they are. But we're going to see that in just a moment. So, going to, we use the be verb, we use going to, and the base verb. Of course, um, the be verbs we, ought, we use are the same ones we used in the present tense. So really, you don't have to learn anything new. You just have to um, apply it in a different way. Um, so I am, he is, she is, it is, they are, we are, you are. They're used in the same way in the future as they were used in the present tense. So going to. Juan and Leida are going to study after the game. We have the be verb here. So be is are. Going to, which remains the same. And of course the main verb here study in blue light blue okay um, you can change up these words and uh, that is how you change it from uh, one tense or one expression to another expression so in this case when we you change from going to to will the main verb is going to stay exactly the same in the simple future tense what is going to change is really just this here. Be going to is gone, and we've added will in its place. So Juan and Leida will study after the game. Um, you could also take Juan and Leida and condense it into its pronouns. So they will study after the game. And of course, they, you can um, contract that with will. And instead of saying they will, you can say they'll. They'll study after the game. Of course, there are contractions um, with the subject and will, which is apostrophe LL. You can say I will, he will, she will, it will, we will, and they will. You can contract those into I'll, he'll, she'll, it'll, will, and they'll. But as I said, the contractions are not going to be shown in the test because I don't want to confuse you with that. So... Don't worry too much about these uh, uh, contractions. So going to and will were the simple future. Now let's head into the progressive future. And if you see here, there are three different ways to express the progressive. Um, let's start with the base form. And I say base because this is the most basic way of conjugating in the progressive future. We use be, which is the be verb, which is am, is, or are and the present progressive verb. Remember that the present progressive verb is the main verb that ends with ing. So Juan and Leida are studying after the game. You can see here that we just have the main verb study to which we added ing, which is highlighted and underlined, excuse me, underlined in dark blue. And we continue using the same B verb are, which is in red here. Okay, Juan and Leida are studying. Um, you could see the progressive base form as basically rearranging the going to simple form. 
we keep R. And then, of course, this going to, we take the ing from going, and we just add it to the end of the main verb. So that would be the base form of the progressive, just be verb and ing on the main verb. Now, uh, how do we use going to be and the progressive? Well, first of all, we have to differentiate going to versus going to be. Where is the mouse pointer? I can't see it. Okay. Um, okay, so here, if you see in the progressive, we state it as going to be versus in the simple, we just state it as going to. Why is that? Because in this one, we use be as a modal. We don't use it as another function of the be verb, which you've already known. So they are going to be studying after the game. And going to be is um, colored green because this functions as a, sim as a single unit. You don't separate this. Um, you have to use going to be. Um, and then, of course, we add ing to the main verb. And, of course, we use the red be verb. We can also use will in the progressive form, which actually I'm going to write it. I'm going to change something here so you can uh, see it a little bit more clearly. So in the progressive form, instead of saying will, we're going to use will be. Okay. If you notice, the progressive form of going to and will, we add the be obligatorily afterwards. Okay. So they are going to be studying and they will be studying after the game. Um, I didn't color this. That was my bad. But I think you understand. Anyways, um, I know it's a lot of uh, theory, so I thought you might want some practice right now. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes so you can construct your own sentences in the future time. So I want to see six sentences from you, okay? I want two sentences using going to, two sentences with will, and two sentences with the progressive, and you can use the progressive in however format you like. It could be the base form, it could be the going to be, or it could be will be form, okay? I'm going to give you five minutes, um, and you can just write your sentences on your notebook. You can write them in Word. You can write them in the chat. If you're going to write them in the chat, I suggest you write all six at the same time, and then you send it. Um, just so I can see de un cantazo who is uh, writing. Okay? So, son las nueve y uno. It just turned into 9.01. I will be back at 9.06. I'll give you five minutes to complete six sentences, okay? I'll be right back. Let me...
Okay. Okay, guys. So Sushi has come to inspect your answers. Um, she just came up to make it she wanted attention. So, debe querer atención, se la voy a dar. So, okay, Luis started with, I'm going to study tonight. Then Karin continued with, I'm going to study. Astrid and Mary are going to sing. The dog will play. My neighbors will paint. They will be walking. That chair will be broken. Okay. Um, I'm going to study when I get home by Janine. Derek, I'm going to study at 11. Astrid and Mary are going to sing in the bar. If you behave, we will get a dog. My neighbors will paint their home. David is going to be walking for a few hours. Oh my God. Uh -huh. That chair will end up breaking if you are not careful. That was good. Jelani, I'm going to study tomorrow. They're going to sing my party this night. My dog will play with the new toys. My neighbors will paint the house next week. David will be running tomorrow. That chair will be broken this night. Okay, Jelani, that, see, that sounds like you're going to make sure that this chair is broken. Like, it's premeditated. All right. Jose, I'm going to take out the trash in the morning. Ashton and Mary are going to dance in the party. The dog will play with his toys. My neighbors promised me they will paint my room for free. Okay, that's a good deal. Make sure they keep their promise. David will be walking to school tomorrow. That chair will break if you sit on it. Okay. I swear my internet is going to be fixed in three days. Laura and Maria are going to be, to be in the beach. My friends will play all night. My neighbor will be making a lot of noise. I know that. Uh, the basketball team will be playing on Friday. The professor will be giving class tomorrow. Oh, not me. Uh, Astrid and Larry are going to sing in the night. Tonight I'm going to study with my friend. Astrid and Larry are going to sing in the bar. My dog will play in the grass. My neighbors will paint the new bedroom of his daughter. David is walking to his work interview. That chair will be broken soon. Okay, Odalis, uh, the B verb for David would be is instead of are. Are is para plurale and is is for singulars. Okay, don't worry about it. Paso estoy. Say bye to sushi. Okay, let's continue with the presentation. Okay, I'm still presenting, right? Yes. Okay, so we did this. All right, there's cat hair all over the computer now. Okay, so expressing the future in time clauses. There is a formula, but first of all, let's um, discuss what a time clause is. Remember that there are words that tell you uh, the specific time when something is taking place. So these are when, before, after, as soon as, <clears throat> until, while. Um, you can use any of these uh, time words with the subject and the verb. And this would make a time clause. Um, you can also call it an adverb clause, but that's something we're going to discuss later in the semester. So we're not going to focus on this just yet. Let's just call it a time clause. So the time clause can come either at the beginning of the sentence or in the second part of the sentence. We'll see this. When he comes. So we have the time word when, and then of course we have the subject he, and the verb comes, which is in the present form. So when he comes, we will see him. It's at the beginning of the sentence. We can also change it up and put it at the end. So we will see him when he comes. So how to express the future in time clauses? Well, you can use um, the present tense in either the simple or the progressive, and this you use it to make a time clause in the future. Um, you can use uh, time words such as often or sometimes. Um, this is gonna make sense soon, don't worry about it. So we use when, before, after, as soon as, until, plus the subject, plus the simple present verb. For example, we will be here when you arrive tomorrow. So we have when, we have the subject you, and then the simple present arrive. The taxi will arrive soon. As soon as it arrives, we'll be able to leave for the airport. 
um, we have as soon as, which is here, um, it would be the subject, and of course, simple present arrives. So in this case, with time clauses, you can use um, the S form of the verb because you're adding more context, and the extra context is what makes it future. They are going to come soon. I will wait here until they come. We use until, which is the time word. They, which would be the subject, and come would be the action in the simple present. We can use while as well in the present progressive. Okay. Sometimes the present progressive is used in a time clause to express an activity that will be in progress in the future. Okay. So the the future has a lot of stuff that is go going on in the present because some of those present actions may extend into the future. Okay. So while I am driving to work tomorrow, I am going to listen to the tape. Um, while I am traveling in Europe next year, I'm going to save money by staying in youth hostels. We have the, the time word while. Um, and basically, all this is saying is that you can express a sentence in the present tense. Um, and this is still happening in the future. Um, it's as long, basically you're committing an action while doing another action. It's basically two simultaneous actions that will be happening in the future. And how, how do we know this is uh, the future? Well, in this case, we use tomorrow, which of course is not today, so it is future. And in this case, we use next year. Okay? If clauses and conditional clauses with if. We often use the present tense forms to talk about the future. Um, you know what? I'm going to skip this because I don't want to put this on the test. So ignore this for now. This is not coming on the test. So let's continue. Ignore this. OK. So these are the time words that we use for time clauses. You know, we have before, which means antes, after is después, when, cuando, as soon as, tan pronto, until, hasta, while, mientras, and if is si, pero no es si de afirmación, sino si de posibilidad. Es si tú quieres, podemos comer antes de la clase. You know, that type of si. Um, continuing. Um, I'm going to give you a couple more minutes so you can make a few sentences using these time clauses. So there's six sentences you can make, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six time words. So I want you to make up your own time, excuse me, your own sentences using your own time clauses. So you could say, for example, before you leave for work, you should feed the cat. Um, you can use after, like, after you come back from work, you should clean the litter box. Okay. Uh, when you're back home from work, you should eat something, for example. Um, you know, just make an original sentence using these time clauses. Right now it is 9.16. Oh, we barely have time. Okay. So I'm going to give you two or three minutes. And then with that last minute we have, I guess... You can read one or two of those sentences to me, and then we will be done for the day. Okay? So I'll give you two, three minutes.
I'm going to give you one more minute, then I'm going to start asking. Okay, so Lismari, tell me a time cl uh, sentence with any of the time clauses. Which one do you have so far? Lismari, are you there? Okay, what about Derek? Okay, so any sentence with any time clause? Uh, before. Before you go exploring, make sure you bring a map. Okay, that's a good sentence. Thank you, Derek. Um, how about, I don't know if Natalie is here. Natalie? Oh, by the way, if I happen to call your name and for some reason you can't turn on your microphone, you can uh, write it in the chat. Right now, I would prefer microphone because we have about 20 seconds left of class. What about Swan Havy? Any sentence with any time clause? Um, after. Mm -hmm. After you sleep, wash your face. After you sleep, wash your face. Okay, así que después de que duermas, te lavas la cara. Sí. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, how about Rachel? Any sentence with any time clause? I want to go after, after you did you remember to clean the kitchen. Okay, um, por lo menos para mí la señal estaba malita, so I couldn't hear you well. After? Yes, after you eat, remember to clean the kitchen. Okay, after you eat, remember to clean the kitchen. Okay, that's good. Um, y una más, antes de irnos, um, who else is here? Omar, are you here? Okay, what about... Angelo? Um, before you go, please help me with this. Before you go, please help me with this. Okay. Okay, good. Perfect. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to the Harlo AI. There was another presentation that I wanted to uh, discuss today. It's already on Canvas. Um, I'm still presenting, so I guess I might as well show you. Um, is this one here that says the future you. I'm just gonna save this for Friday's class. Um, I will just upload a video explaining what I want you to do. And there was an activity here. Um, I'll change that up. Don't worry about this. So if you wanna get a head start on reading this, you can. Um, if not, then just wait for Friday. Uh, and that should be that. I still have not decided how I'm going to be giving you this test. I will let you know as soon as I figure it out, porque honestamente, I have a couple of options and they all have their pros and they all have their cons. Um, la avisará lo más pronto posible. Si por alguna razón me atraso y in, for some reason, like, no puedo dar el examen ese mismo día que dije, que sería el miércoles 16, um, yo lo pudiera trazar y ustedes no se afectarían, ¿ok? So, don't let my, my indecision uh, worry you, porque cualquier cosa yo pudiera trazarlo. Um, of course, cualquier cosa que decida se lo voy a dejar saber con algo de anticipación. Um, el viernes continuamos with um, the future, y entonces el lunes repasaríamos simple and progressive, present, past, and future. So, estén pendientes para eso. 
Guys, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your attention. Um, we can uh, see each other again on Monday. Cualquier cosita, pues, uh, we can just talk later. You can send me an email. Recuerden que mi hora de oficina son ahora las nueve y media. So you can just join me uh, between 9.30 and 10.30. All right, guys. Da, da, da. Okay, Joniel, Josué, Ildaliz, Delianis, Derek, Nayeli, Guillermo, Natalie, and Rachel. Have a nice day. Uh, Ildaliz, thank you. So she is a good cat. Adiós, Josué. Adiós, Odali. Luis, I'll see you guys later. Sebastián, have a nice day. Okay, Hennessy, everything okay? Are you still there?